Okay, I'm going to go over how conditional security, the heresy of conditional security, produces self-righteousness in the person that believes it. Because I've written in my notes that conditional security heretics, they take away glory from Jesus Christ and put it on themselves. Instead of Jesus Christ being the author of our salvation, they basically turn salvation into a process of us having to live holy and us having to continue in righteousness and that kind of stuff. And the rip verses that are not even dispensationally for us, which talk about enduring to be saved, and they see you have to endure in holiness. Basically, they make salvation into a process of works, and it's dependent on us having to live holy instead of fully on Jesus Christ. Uh, some verses that disprove that is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Go there. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is not of yourself, it's of God. John chapter 6, verse 35. John chapter 6, go there. It says, John 6, 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So he is the bread of life. And when we believe on him, when we come to him, we'll never hunger and never thirst in terms of salvation. Again, he's the author of our salvation. We don't earn our own righteousness or our own salvation by our righteousness. Titus chapter 2, verse 5, another good one. It says, Let's go there real quick. Titus chapter 2, verse 5. It says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's not by our works of righteousness. He saves us. Jesus Christ is the one who saves a dirty sinner like me. John chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. Go there. John chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. It says, Get there real quick. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give unto or I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him uh, shall be in him a well of water springing up unto into everlasting life. Not that that's reading on a computer, but he gives us the water of life. You know, it talks about that in John chapter 7 too, when we believe on him, out of our belly flows a water or rivers of life. Well, paraphrasing, of course. Uh, but again, he's the author of our salvation. If you see this theme over and over again, John chapter 3, verse 18. Go there. John chapter 3, verse 18. It says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. We're not condemned. He that believeth on him is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So when we believe, we're not condemned. That simple. John chapter 20, verse 31. Go there. John chapter 20, verse 31. Says, let me just scroll down a little bit further. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. You know, again, we have life through his name. It's not by our own works or our own righteousness. Salvation is of Jesus Christ. He's the author of our salvation. We, and again, you're going to see this theme over and over again. John chapter, or sorry, not John. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, sorry, chapter one, verse twenty-one and twenty-two. Second Corinthians, chapter one, or yeah, Second Corinthians. Sorry, I went to First Corinthians, verses twenty-one and twenty-two. Good, pro good passage proving eternal security. Uh, now he which established us with you, with in Christ, hath anointed us, is God. Who hath also sealed us and given us given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts? So He seals us, He saves us, and He seals us. That simple. So salvation is by God, God who saves us. We don't have to save ourselves by our righteousness or our own holiness. It's taking away glory from Jesus Christ and putting it on ourselves. It makes us self-righteous. You can boast and say, "Well, look how good I am." Look, at, you know, it's, it's it's what Pharisees do essentially. So it takes away glory from Jesus Christ and it makes us self-righteous. It's about our own righteousness. It's not about Jesus Christ. See, that's the thing. Conditional security, this heresy of conditional security, it's Roman Catholicism. It teaches its works. It's right. It's our own self-righteousness. It's um, producing pride and self-righteousness in the person that promote that promotes it 
because they think, well, I'm I'm living holy, I'm good, I you know, I can ascend to heaven, you know, I'll be like the Most High, like Satan says in Isaiah chapter 14. You see that the the mindset of conditional security is the exact same mindset that Satan had in Isaiah 14. He says, I'll ascend to the throne, you know, all you know, paraphrasing of course. He's like, I'll be like the Most High. These conditional security people, they want to be like the Most High. They say, well, I can ascend to heaven by my own righteousness and my, and my enduring and holiness. You know, they're satanic. It's a, it's a very very satanic heresy. It works. It's Roman Catholicism. So don't be deceived by this heresy of conditional security. Uh, God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.